Hi, it's Caroline again from Neon Ferry. This is just a really quick, um, another video for tips and tricks for beginners face painting. So if you're just thinking about starting up your own business, I'm gonna be doing quite a few of these different videos. Um, uh, but similarly, if you've been asked to paint for a school or your local community association or charity, this is just a few simple, quick things that you need to put in place to be ordered to paint members of the general public. So first and foremost, obviously, is your paints and your products. You need good quality, um, water-soluble, safe, non-toxic, FDA or EU-approved professional face and body paints. Especially this time of year, try and avoid, definitely avoid, um, the sort of cheap, low-grade, greasy, oily stuff that you can buy in different shops and toy shops and stuff like that. Please don't use that. It's really not great for the skin and it's not good to work with or take off. Um, go for something like Snazaroo. If you're just starting out, if you're going to be doing painting for a charity or fundraising, start with Snazaroo. You can buy this online. In the UK, you can buy this in the range, in Hobbycraft, lots of places. It's quite well known. Um, and I started off using Snazaroo years ago and I've been painting for seven years now. And I still use some of theirs, actually. It's, it's good. It's really good stuff. But it is safe, non-toxic, good quality products. Um, if you've moved on from Snazaroo and you've been painting a little longer, you may already know some of the other brands that I'm about to mention. Um, I also use um, Tag and I use Diamond Effects and I've also used Wolf Brothers, Chameleon, Silly Farm. Oh, crikey, there's so many. Global, Superstar, there are so many different um, brands of professional, good quality face painting products. Um, you can buy them online. I would suggest going to the Face Painting Shop or Face Paints Direct or Silly Farm. Lots of online suppliers, but go and check them out and get good products. Moving on from that, you're going to need public liability insurance. Not sure what this is called in the US or Australia or other parts of the world. Obviously, I'm pretty sure you've got an alternative, um, but public liability insurance will cover you um, with insurance uh, painting members of the general public. So, for instance, I pay about 70, 80 pounds a year and my insurance covers me up to a value of 5 million. So it means that I am insured to uh, do face and body painting on people. I can do glitter tattoos, temporary tattoos, festival glitters and funky hair. So if I want to do hair braids or hair tinsels, I'm insured for that. Um, but you absolutely need public liability insurance if you're going to be um, painting or glittering members of the general public. It covers yourself, it covers the venue that you might be working at, and it covers obviously members of the public. Um, moving on from that, you will also need um, to go with your kit some other um, bits and pieces. So you'll need um, three water pots to keep your water nice and clean and fresh. I would regularly change that as well. Um, you need good brushes. Don't use um, Q-tips or um, cotton wool buds. I mean, they're bad for the environment anyway, but they're no good for face painting. Like, don't even try. Um, just get some good, just get some face paint brushes. You only need three, maybe three or four, just to start off with. Snazaroo, again, do like a starter pack. I think they're kind of like goldy, yellowy, glittery brushes. I've still got one now after seven years and I still use it. But you can get their starter pack online or like in one of the shops I mentioned. Just start off with those if, you, if that's what you, you know, if you are literally just starting off. If you've been painting for a while, then you probably know Low Cornell or some of the other brands. Um, but yeah, just good, good brushes. You don't need hundreds and hundreds. I've got loads of brushes, but to be honest with you, I only really use about maybe six or something. I always go back to the same brushes every time. So also you will need some sponges. So these need to be nice, soft face painting sponges. Again, Snazaroo um, do their own sponges. Totally recommend those. Um, Always Wicked Art, they do really lovely sponges if you're a bit more um, into professional face painting. But similarly, you know, just super soft baby sponges cut into quarters work really, really well. Um, another thing is to have your setup, however you're gonna have this, have, it, have your setup clean, tidy, ordered. Um, either have some uh, baby wipes on hand. Um, I know that, again, they're not very environmentally friendly. So what a lot of um, other face painters have been doing, myself included of late, is to have um, some just cloths that you wash at the end of the day in your washing machine with your sponges to use just for face painting. Um, so, yeah, I've been using reusable cloths. That's, that's a, good, a good thing to use. You'll probably need something like an old towel or tea towel. Again, something that you only use for face painting for 
you know, uh, rubbing your brushes on or taking excess paint off of your brushes uh, and for cleaning up. Again, that will need to be cleaned at the end of the day in a washing machine with your sponges and everything else. Um, aside from that, I would say you'll need a mirror. If you can get a shatterproof mirror, again, you can buy those online. Again, it just uh, reduces any possible health and safety issues and they're super cheap to buy. Um, and just have fun with it. Just have fun. Make sure that your the tables and chairs that you're using, obviously, this is common sense, but just make sure that they're um, safe at a good height for children. Um, make sure that children are happy. Again, this is another thing, actually, that's really useful to have. And I totally suggest that you have this with your kit if you're painting. This is mine. This is like a disclaimer stroke health and safety laminate that I have with me. This is up on display clearly on my kit so that when I'm painting, people can read this. And this explains the process of what I do when I face paint, uh, my health and safety practices, um, instances when I will decline painting a child, um, which may well be if they have chicken pox or eczema. But similarly, if, a, if there's a kid that's just really not happy, really doesn't want to be painted, I'm not going to paint them if it you know, makes them un unhappy because I don't want to scare them. It needs to be a happy um, and enjoyable experience for the child because ultimately it's for them. So, um, but yeah, babies and that kind of thing. I won't paint children that are really little, sort of under sort of two, two and a half, that kind of age, really, to be honest. Um, the older, the better. Um, and yeah, but your safe and safety information is just up and mine just details all of that kind of thing. It details the products that I use. Um, it details my contact information. If people want further information about the products they use, then it opens up a conversation and they can talk to me about that as well. Anyway, that's enough for me for today. I'm going to do another video very, very soon. Uh, please give me a like, subscribe. And if you've got any questions about any of the products I've been talking about, let me know. And happy Halloween. See you later, guys. Happy painting. Bye.